Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's our diggers have for week 279. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up from Cleverly Blonde, we've got wingames backslash comp backslash anadisc. I've got a bad feeling this is just going to be like an animated disc icon and that's it. But we'll see. Um, anamdisc.doc.ini, m3d. Wait, m3d? Well, it's only 260 bytes, so it's probably not what I was thinking it was. But then we also have other 3D stuff here? Huh. So maybe we got like 3D wireframes or something? It's definitely not going to be anything textured with the file sizes that small. Um, and a reg file. Okay, so let's check out the doc. So no conversion. So apparently whatever this is, it's from Hyperact Incorporated. So 3D Desktop Animator. Version 1.0, updated March 93. AnimDisk is a Windows 3.1 3D desktop animator that is script-based. AnimDisk is executing in the background, playing a 3D animation script while you continue to work. Okay, so yeah, this is basically just going to show some 3D shapes, huh? Okay, so it says here the 3D desktop animator is free to use and share. Please give it to your friends with all the files listed in the file list section above. But it still has a registration, because it says here, if you want to create 3D objects and scripts on your own, you'll need to purchase the 3D lib package from Hyperact Incorporated. Okay, so how much are they wanting to charge for that? Um, oh, because it's not a... Oh, jeez. Okay, so let's open this up again, and then we'll just move this... Oh, uh, whoops. Um, this over that. And that... Oh, you gotta put drop it onto the. Yeah, that's one of the weird things with um. Well, you can't see it there. So one of the weird things about Windows Write that's always bugged me: if you drag and drop a file over top of the, like just the document you have opened, it places like the icon <laughs> in it. So if you want to actually open a file with Windows Write through drag and drop, you have to drag and drop it over the menu bar. <laughs> That's always been something I found really bizarre and annoying about Windows Write. But anyway, so what did they want registration-wise to be able to create your own, um... $50 just to be able to create 3D <laughs> wireframe graphics for a program that's otherwise free. Okay... Now, apparently it also comes with a 3D Mania screensaver module. I think we might have seen something like that in the past. Maybe? Not entirely certain. Um, well, let's try running it. Error occurred during runtime object load. <laughs> because, of course. Uh, really? This program wants me to copy a whole bunch of crap <laughs> into the Windows client, into the Windows main directory. I am so glad that a lot of applications have moved away from this kind of nonsense of centralizing everything. But anyways, okay, so it's the animdisc.ini, the .m3d, and all of the 3d2 files. Okay, let's do that. So all of the 3d2 files, the ini, and the m3d. Okay, file, copy, c prompt, backslash windows, and apparently, wait, what? So that file's already there? Although admittedly, the one that's already there has an incorrect file date. Um, I guess replace? Okay, that was interesting. Two of these files were already there, but not all of them. Huh. Okay, so will it run now? Um, maybe? Oh wait, there it goes. Um, you can barely see much of it though. Um, do we have any options here? Okay, double-clicking it just sort of resets the background. 
Yeah, I think to get the most out of this, we're going to have to change the background here. So if we go into control panel, desktop, change the wallpaper to none. And now is this going to work nicely? Okay, so we've got shapes, I guess. They're just sort of, yeah, they're 3D wireform, wireframe shapes doing weird sort of things going on here. <laughs> really not sure what this is supposed to accomplish. Like, I mean, it's not like it's clearing things when it's done. And like, yeah, it's, and now it's just doing everything in green. And now it's doing it in red. Like, here's the thing. It's just repeating the same patterns over and over again. It's just doing it in different colors each time. Or, ma or rather, it's going through one set of colors and then going through another set of colors. And because it's not clearing anything, you can't even, like, tell what it's doing half the time. Now, if I double-click on the icon down here, it does actually clear the screen. And then it continues going from wherever it left off. But that's still, it's still awkward. Like, I mean, the, the next one coming up is like this, yeah, this triangular pyramid thing there, which, because I had to clear the screen to see it, it doesn't really get the kind of pattern across that would have been good. And I still can't even tell what shape that's supposed to be. See how this almost feels like it was a throwaway extension of some kind of screensaver that we might have already looked at? Like, did we already look at, like, some kind of... Like, I mean, I've got something here called 3D Mania, which is just a... that. Oh, yeah, the, th the 3D Mania thing says 3D Lib Screensaver Copyright HyperAct Incorporated. So, yeah, apparently it was that same thing using some same files or something. Or actually, no, I don't want that to, <laughs> I don't want that to continue to be the screensaver. Oh, and that's brilliant. Now it's doing it as a black wireframe. So because it's black on a black desktop, we can't see anything. <laughs> uh, at least I think it's going. Oh yeah, I can see some of the lines there. <laughs> it's just cycling through the standard Windows 16 color palette. So that was Anim Disk, a uh, very overpriced, well, no, it's not technically overpriced, but it's a very basic program which just does this one sequence of things we're seeing, and to get it to do more, then it's overpriced. So, yeah, definitely not worth much of anything, really. Next up from Alex the Rat, we've got DOS games backslash cards backslash clondk31. Well, definitely a Klondike Solitaire program. Um, got a README, which, an exclamation mark, I guess that's really important. Um, Klondike.doc, .exe, .gx, .hlp, and an order form, and a swole bat. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing that's probably from the BBS or whatever that this was downloaded from. Type swole.bat. Um, that just types the text file, so... Type if I could if I could type myself swole dot text. Oh yeah, for program ex was extracted from the shareware online CD. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, that's a new low. <laughs> okay, so we're currently going through a shareware archive called the Soft Key Two Thousand Hit Games collection which is a two cds with a whole bunch of software loaded onto them and for the longest time i've always felt that most of the software on it was gleaned from bbs's because let's face it that's was a good source of just massively downloading stuff so that's probably what they did to fill the cds was they just went onto a whole bunch of bbs's and just downloaded everything but this particular one right here didn't come from a BBS. It came from another CD-ROM, which means that the SoftKey collection, they to put it together, they were actually getting other shareware CDs and copying the stuff off of them. <laughs> I, I, I know shareware is technically free software, but that's just like, 
That's one really sketchy way of getting your shareware to distribute for a fee. Because I remember this collection, I this collection was like twenty or twenty-five dollars or something like that when I bought it. So <laughs> you're charging money for software you didn't get from a primary source, you got from a secondary source. Okay, enough rambling about shareware distribution nonsense. Let's actually just see what we got here. So edit kdk underscore read dot m e exclamation mark so archive contains klondike 3.1 shareware program freely distributed all files are included distributed as unoriginal oh <laughs> gets even better the program is a shareware program that can be freely distributed provided that the program is distributed as the original unmodified self-extracting exe file which isn't here so, yeah, not only did SoftKey violate that, the shareware collection that originally, that SoftKey got this one from violated that as well. Holy jeez, just violations everywhere. Okay, so Klondike, also known under a variety of local names such as Fascination and China Man, is probably the best known solitaire card game. Actually, many people are not aware of the fact that Klondike is just one of dozens of solitaire games and use the name solitaire to refer to it. <laughs> That was a big brackets. There are several implementations of Klondike available for MSOFT's machines, but most of them have very crude graphics when they do have graphics at all. I'm surprised this guy noticed that. <laughs> and cumbersome user interfaces. This prompted me to write a version that would take full advantage of high resolution EGA graphics and was intuitive and easy to use. Several months and a few thousand lines of Turbo Pascal 4.0 source code later, Klondike 1.0 was released. User response was very enthusiastic, and several users made suggestions that were incorporated in later versions. This latest incarnation incorporates a few more enhancements and is generally regarded by its users as the best solitaire card game available for the IBM PC and compa- <laughs> Ran out of air on the very last word, P IBM PC and compatibles. I hope you'll enjoy Klondike 3.1 and encourage the development of other high quality. Wait, I just realized something here. This is called Klondike 3.1. Yet, the Windows version that would have been out that you would have played Klondike Solitaire on, it was Windows 3.1. <laughs> That's almost too coincidental. Okay, there's actually a lot of, um, a lot of stuff in here, like, we got the registration details, apparently there's some um, command line arguments as well. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> Okay, let's see if this really is the best Klondike Solitaire game you will ever play on the IBM PC. Oh boy, we're not off to a good start, because that is a very shrill PC speaker rendition of that song. Do you want to use the mouse? Select yes or no. Um, I'm guessing if you're not using the mouse like I am right now, you would actually have to push Y or N. Although, something I've noticed here is that the mouse, um, mouse has some interesting masking issues going on. <laughs> I hope the video is actually capturing that. It's almost like the mask is moving before the cursor moves. That's very weird. Anyways, let's use the mouse. Please enter your name. Okay, so, okay, fair start. You got a foundation up here. The pa Okay, that's actually nice that it actually labels what these piles are. You don't see that very often in solitaire games. Now we got our, our columns here with numbers on them. And we have a lot of buttons over at the side here. Um, we got an info button. So unregistered evaluation copy. And then we got a config button, so we can set all those options there. Um, press right button when done. Okay. <laughs> okay, and we can select which rules we want to go by here. So either turn cards one by one, go through pack once, turn cards three by three, unlimited passes, or turn cards one by one with unlimited passes. Okay, and then we can either do strict, move all face up cards as a unit only, or move from one, move from one up to all face-up cards. Okay, so, like, I mean, this is, this would be more the method I'm used to playing. And then we have various card backs. So we have your tra a traditional pattern for blue and red, 
Got some hot air balloons. A uh, koala. Though that looks almost looks more like a toy koala. And then a pelican. Okay, so let's actually try playing this here. So, queen. Okay, so can I click and drag? I cannot. So you have to click and then click again. So... Well, this isn't off to a great start. <laughs> we moved one card, but I don't think I can move anything else right now. So, let's pick up a pile from the... Uh, how do I do this? Okay, that's kind of odd. You have to right-click to pick a card up from the pack there. Huh. Okay, so we got our first foundation card. And we got our second foundation card. Okay, that was quick. Um, nowhere to put that 10, unfortunately. Okay, I can finally put a card down. As you can see, it's keeping count of how many are in these piles here. And I already went through quite a few. Yeah, this is not going well. <laughs> I am not getting cards that I really need. Although I've, I've got all these foundation cards. Like, all the aces. Like, the, that is that something, right? Okay, we got a two of spades, and then I can move the three of spades, and I can move... Or, wait, wait. Because of how badly badly these cards are working out for me, I probably shouldn't move that king right away. Let's instead move that king. Maybe get something good. Okay, we can, make, we can move like that. Then we got the four and the three. Okay, that was a smart play. <laughs> and just as I was saying that was a smart play, I ran out of moves to make down here. Okay, then. I know, it doesn't look like you can move cards off the foundation. I'm told that that's not a normal rule in Klondike, that you're not normally supposed to do that, like be able to do that. It's something you can do in Windows Solitaire, and so I'm kind of used to being able to do that. Now, it's I don't have to do it now, but it's just... Um, it's just something i got to keep in mind, is that that's, the way I'm used to being able to do that is not normal. So I can't really, shouldn't be holding that against the program if it doesn't allow me to do that. But then at the same time, this game has considerable amount of rules. Well, actually, it's not a considerable amount. I just noticed that you don't have to right-click on the pack to get a new card to come up. You can right-click anywhere and a new card comes up. Like, if I undo that, like, if I right-click, like, right here, <laughs> new card comes up from the pack. I'm, given the amount of switching between the left and right mouse buttons you have to do to use this program properly, I'm not sure I like that. But yeah, I don't think this game's gonna end well right now, cause not a lot of cards left in the pack there, the waste pile's getting pretty big. Um, I am moving some stuff around, but... Okay, we got, we got some action now. And that's all the action. Or, no, no, yeah, no, we can keep doing stuff. You the king over there. We got an eight. Okay, seen a lot of action now. Um, and that's where it ends. Because can't move that six. Okay, so... Don't think we got a lot of life left in this one. Um, okay, we got the two of diamonds to move. But I don't think that's going to really do much for us. Move that jack, but yep, we are screwed. Cannot finish. There are no cards on the tableau that can be moved to the foundation. Press any key. Yep. So that's the end of that one. I guess. New game? Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Now I guess this time I'll just try to... I'll just do a, a quick run through here, see if I can get any further. I'm not going to commentate this one. Okay, so this one's actually going quite a bit better. I've got three of the aces up, and I've already been able to start getting some cards off. So, yeah, let's see if this actually gets to a win or not. Uh, this one's close to a win, but I don't think it's going to pull it off. But, I don't know, still a chance. Got the three there, the four there. Um, that's not the five we need to get off, though. Mm, yeah, I don't see any more moves here. So if I hit finish, yeah, there's no cards that can be still be done. Although at least I'm up $20 on that one. So yeah, that was Klondike. Um, it is actually a decent version of Klondike Solitaire for DOS. Um, it does have a good number of features. It's a little weird with how it controls, but it's not super unusual. Like, it's not that you can't get used to it, it's just different. Um, yeah, this isn't a bad version. $15 plus $5 shipping. 
I guess if you really wanted a computerized Klondike game and you didn't have Windows, then this would suffice. And our last dig for today from Matthew Belshin is DOS games backslash arcade backslash begin to. Begin to what? Begin to question if this is an actual game or not? Um, oh, I was actually kind of on point there because all we've got is an executable, a man file that's surprisingly big but older than the executable. Okay. Like, if that's the manual, that's a, well, first of all, that's a big manual. And then there's also a what's new? I'm not sure what to expect here. Uh, let's edit the what's.new file and see if that gives us anything. Um, version 2.0 of begin is have finally been released. Oh boy. Wait, what? <laughs> there are now Federation star bases, tankers, tugs, Klingon outposts, Orion grapplers, Orion armadillos? Orion armadillos. What are we dealing with here? The only thing I can think of here is that maybe this is a computerized version of that tabletop Star Trek game that I can't remember the name of at the moment. It was like Starfleet Battles or something like that. But why is this called Begin? I guess the better question is, is that man file actually the manual? Oh, yeah. It's the manual. <laughs> I saw a lot of numbers go up there. So apparently this is a tactical starship simulation, version 1.65, copyright 84 to 89, by Clockwork Software. Okay. And apparently registration is only $10 for something like this, and or 15 if you want some extra stuff with it. But... Begin is actually a simulation of a simulator that tests your ability to command a fleet starship. A simulation of a simulator. What level of meta are we getting ourselves into here? <laughs> yeah, I really feel like this is like a precursor to or inspired by the tabletop Star Trek game, which I don't know if that was ever like an official thing. Like, I mean, it had, like, proper Starfleet ships and everything in it, but I don't think it was ever actually called Star Trek. Because they've some kind, for, for whatever reason, I don't, like, I don't know enough about it. Like, I had some stuff for it when I was a kid, but I never had enough to play a proper game, and I don't think I would have been able to get anyone to play it with me anyways. But, anyways, let's, let's see what we got here. Begin 2. So... Tactical Starship Simulation. We got the registration details. And we've gone into VGA mode. So, what is our future captain? Your last name is that. So, you will be which nation? <laughs> I can either be the Federation, Klingon, Romulan, or an Orion pirate. Okay, you must specify the ally and enemy fleets and indicate which vessel will be your flagship for the simulation may start. Then enter begin to start the simulation. Okay. So if I'm remembering correctly, because I'm thinking back to the, the stuff that I do know about the tabletop game. I think the heavy cruiser is the equivalent of the Constitution class ship. So, how do I actually give that to myself? <laughs> Specify the ally enemy fleets and indicate which vessel will be your flagship. Okay, so if I said Federation Heavy Cruiser, what'll that do? Okay, <laughs> that doesn't help. So, ally, flagship, enemy. Okay, so if I type in flagship... So, flagship class, we'll do heavy cruiser. You have not selected any heavy cruiser. <laughs> well, that doesn't help. I'm going to turn the cycles up a little because it's kind of going slow with the, the scrolling. Um, I guess I have to give my, give a, give some stuff to that first. So, ally, what's that going to do? Number of ships, uh, we'll do one. Ship class, heavy cruiser. 
Okay, so we have one heavy cruiser, so flagship. Heavy cruiser. Okay, so that's how I set that up. So enemy. And we're gonna give the enemy one ship, and we'll make it a battle cruiser. And then flagship battle cruiser. Make sure it's spelled right. Oh wait, how do I set up an enemy flagship? Maybe I can just begin. Maybe the flagship only matters if it's um Okay, flagship only matters if you're the if you're the person playing. Okay, so we've got the Trenton and the Xantha. And we can see our phaser bakes, tor torpedo tubes, probe launchers. The fact that we're seeing little boxes for those things is kind of... And not to mention hexagons. <laughs> we have a hexagon grid. <laughs> like, I mean, I know it doesn't look it because it's kind of at an angle. Or it may not be a hexagon grid, but it's certainly giving me the impression that that's what we've got going here. I estimate our chances of defeating the enemy to be 1.3 to 1 against. Spock, put a sock in it. <laughs> um, let's get some help here. So our orders are scrolling like crazy. Uh, how am I supposed to read any of that? <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let's maybe if I push the pause key while this is going. Okay, so I can push the pause key and do it that way. So fire, lock, turn, load, disable, order, destruct, abort, transport, phasers, torpedoes, probes. Wow, there are a lot of commands here. Oh, I guess maybe that's what the blue lines are, so that those are our shields. Okay, so I guess if we go to helm, come to course, uh, plus 60. Warp factor 2. Okay, the phaser banks lit up green, so I'm guessing that might mean that we actually have the ability to hit our target. So can we do a target order? They don't know that order. Uh, how do I target an enemy? We got a lock option. So maybe if we do lock, lock phasers, banks, one on the Xantha. Locking one bank on the Xantha. Okay. So can we actually lock all of them like that? Lock phasers to Xantha. Can we just short form the entire? Well, it says locking one bank on the Xantha, but we actually did just lock the second bank on them. Um, does F3, oh, that's good. F3 redoes the entire command. <laughs> okay, phasers locked. Um, fire? Phasers. One. Spread. Uh, just do a small spread. Okay, not sure if I hit them or not. Um, fire, phasers, two. Spread 10. Like, I'm seeing a number go down on their side, but that doesn't mean much. Well, a scan of the Xantha shows that it's in perfect condition. So, nope, my phasers didn't do a darn thing. <laughs> oh, well. Um, oh, wait, the Xantha just... F oh, yeah, Xantha's firing two torpedoes. Um, that's actually... A an interesting question. Can we lock phasers onto the torpedoes? Uh, probably not. Um, lock phasers. Bank one, because that's the one that's... Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to... Yeah, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, there is a pursue order. So let's try pursue the Xantha. Warp factor six. Okay, so we just get hit by, um, do we just get hit by the torpedoes? Cause I don't see them anymore. Um, can we do a status? Status what? The Trenton? 
Uh, how do I how do I get information on myself? <laughs> well, apparently we have survivors <laughs> at 450 as opposed to you know crew. Um, do we actually hit them, or did they hit us? Like, I mean, they clearly hit us to some degree. Uh, torpedo class. I don't know what my options are for torpedo classes. Do we have like class two? Two is not a torpedo class. Well, that doesn't help. Okay, apparently I did hit their shields this time. Okay, so I did actually do some damage to them, I think. Um, can we scan the Xantha? Yeah, we did some damage to their shields. Not a lot. <laughs> so yeah, that was begin. Like, this is kind of like... It's kind of, it's definitely taking some kind of inspiration from the tabletop Star Trek game. At least I think it is. It feels like it is. But it's playing more so like one of those tabletop strategy games where you actually have to measure things out. <laughs> because everything is happening in steps here. And at the same time, you're having to issue orders, which kind of don't make sense, but yet kind of do. Like, I'm almost wishing that they put more effort into making it so that the orders were more, um, were more legible as opposed to just pieces of numbers and stuff. Because that would kind of make more sense then. And it's not like they couldn't do that, because they're clearly doing a lot of text parsing here. But, yeah, it's, it's an interesting game for sure, but, uh, wait, what? <laughs> Lost contact with the Xantha. Well, I guess we're just not doing so well. <laughs> but yeah, it's an interesting game for sure. But I don't think I'm going to want to continue playing it.